may be slightly off topic, but if you all are willing to hear it, I have a story about someone who pretty much ruined their life because of stupid shit they did in the name of being a furry. Alright, this took place in high school, so may take a bit of time to recollect and type up everything and first time green texting, so here's the first part. When I met North not his real name, and don't remember if it was his fursona name, but both were equally as stupid. Be in sophomore year of high school. Friends know I'm a furry and are remarkably cool with it. Other people are cool with it too, since I've treated it like being a fan of the Thundercats and shows like that. No furry paraphernalia either. Halfway through first semester, new kid comes to school. Super rich family move to get richer because less property tax and cheaper cost of living. Hear about new kid, think nothing of it. Suddenly getting made fun of for being a furry. Whatevs.m page 3. Escalates over the next few weeks and starting to wonder what the fuck happened. After a month, Pastor McLaudus seeks me out and introduces himself by his furry name North. Just nod him off and go back to doing my own thing with my friends. Eventually he leaves. Kel loves orange soda and fried chicken. The whitest guy you've ever seen a friend of mine tells me about him after North soon bumbles off. Apparently, when he mentioned he was a furry to play off some shitty sympathy card, people got curious, and were actually interested since I did show some people some badass stuff like werewolves and shit. Apparently pulled out Nico ears and a fox tail from his bag, pulled them on, and started using shitty furry slang god fucking damn it. So that's my first encounter, and surely not the last with North, as he becomes a much bigger problem later on. Sorry for the delay. Still remembering shit, but this is the second encounter Yifimus the ultimate. Now as for one reason I made furry stuff cool with my friends, I made sort of a homebrew of DD where it pretty much is the new Thundercats. Except Mumra didn't exist and humanity was what created the human-animal hybrids during a huge ass war before killing each other off or escaping in dimensional pockets outside of time Russian. Dinosaur cloning fuck yeah we held the campaign during lunch. Study her whole clever schedule manipulation at the start of the year allowed everyone to be together for it and on Fridays at my place. This is how North became a tumor to us. Lunch period on a snowy day, cramped inside because fuck getting cold. In class next to library. Approving new character sheets with my closest friends for a continuation of a campaign that takes place 100 years after Spell Plague how magic worked was that it came suddenly as a mutation over time. Three different types of magic with wizardry, battle magic, and mana magic. Best friend pandaman dude loves pandas, and said if he were ever a furry, he'd be one had rolled up a warrior turned battle mage because of the sudden influx of magic. Going over finer details when in comes north we made good progress on avoiding the guy as he became more and more toxic. Though info as to why was like getting cloak and dagger on getting information. Nothing reliable, but nothing to not believe. Oh hey guys, can I play? Uh, we kind of have a full par. Slaps his shit on the table and pulls out a binder of shitty drawings drawn in half anime half potato style. Points to a shitty drawing of a blue and white wolf with a rainbow tail I want to be my fursona I visibly cringed. I remember that clearly north. Frown as I look it over and shake my head can't. He just does not fit in. Blue fur like that wouldn't be natural. Especially that rainbow tail. There's no evolution -er. Got cut off by a rant of how there's magic in this game and he can do what the butt fuck he wants not wanting to deal with it. I sigh and make up some bullshit on how he dyed his fur. But gave him a permanent penalty on any stealth checks because it's fucking bright blue fur and a fucking rainbow. He then goes on to make what noobs do. An ultimate warrior who can do anything in the edgy lone wolf persona akin to the coupling of a razor blade factory and angled ruler. Nothing strong since he had points everywhere. So he was bound to fail at everything he done. Can't sneak for shit, can't intimidate, can't fight, can't do anything because of his dumbassness. Approve it because I like taking the piss out of newbies. All takes about half an hour and we're starting off the game. Party of a battle mage panda pandaman forgot his name. A roguish fox maxin, a wizardy almunin, larger a chapicabro aptly named libus and a cobbled artificer spike. The names also reflect the players as they will be regulars in this story. The party was leaving, but since North was doing his fucking lone wolf shtick, he was left behind. I follow the party at a distance. First battle is on shortly after, and party sees North in the distance because it's like fucking obvious and they think he's having them do all the work so North can come in and reap the XP at the end ain't having that shit. While North was watching for whatever RP drama he was about to do, a rat highwayman had already snuck up on him and was poised to backstab him. No. I'm stealth right now. Roll. Rolls proceed, he got a 10. 
normally I would let that pass, but minus 10 is also the modifier against him for blue fucking fur. The rat sees you and is very confused as to why would there be blue on brown grey ground, and why was this wolf trying so hard to hide? The party has just finished up with their encounter, and turned their attention to watch Wonder Dog in action. North lasted surprisingly long, he managed a saving throw that only took out half his health. What hope there was was short lived and he ended up dying before he could make a worthwhile scratch on the beginner enemy rat. Suddenly specking into dual wielding for every weapon without any proficiency in any weapon is a bad idea. Party wastes one of the few and very, very valuable res gems I give at the start of a game because of how much they pity him. End of the campaign as the bell to return to class sounded while North was fuming. He would still return, but this is just the beginning. Now that we have the general stuff down, let's get to know North a bit better. North is possibly Bobby Hill would be if he was like Koth season 4's Bobby, except with furries, long black hair, and whatnot. Worst part is, the dude never showered. It was like he was the embodiment of every negative furry stereotype. We'd give him a real hard time about this, but he'd just laugh it off and think we were joking. He'd always wear his tail at any given opportunity, and that thing was just as gross and smelly looking, just a sick dirty rainbow tail. He'd wear the ears, too, but he got in trouble more than enough times as it was seen as a hat and thank goodness for that. It also helped that one of us found it and misplaced it in a dumpster. Just a tidbit before I get back to the main story. Now after the first embarrassing defeat, I gave North the opportunity to redo his character sheet before we would start again. Rest of the party agreed to this because we all thought it was really funny seeing him miserably fail. We did not tell him that to his face, of course. Friday, during study hall of the same day pretty much our North found out about our games he did his work on the new character sheet while we played our DS's and TCG's. North looks fucking proud at the end of class and hands me the revised character sheet. Almost the fucking same. Fuck my life. Luigi. Only differences was a huge ass description in the bio about generic shit of how he was an orphan and other lone wolfy bullshit. Had the opportunity of fine tuning a great character with all my notes and books, as well as a notebook full of the lore I had on the in game world. Almost all untouched. Now dual wielding spec in swords, a step up, but still not spec for swords in basic. Still Mary Sue of Warrior who can do anything but still can't. Still blue fucking fur. No armor specialization. Fuck it. Write on the notepad attached to my screen to watch him for Mary Sue shenanigans and appropriately punish. Now we change scenes from the school to the card shop. This place was essentially the high for teens and adults for TCG as well as gaming. Not only was it a comic shop, there were two back rooms devoted to tabletop TCG gaming, and another for video gaming with time rented out for 5 bucks an hour. So we get to the card shop and set up shop. Picking up from the campaign. Spike. The party leader only out of terror he pulled from the others through his mechanical magistry and attitude towards anything that would slow his grand plans had demanded the reason why North had jeopardized almost everything and wasted a very valuable resource. The memories. What dot why? I remembered that rat from when he raided my village and killed my parents. Nigga that rat was younger than you. Deciding I had enough and did not want something so painfully uninteresting to derail the game. I pulled out a character sheet I had been saving for when I wanted to play. It was one thing that would take the ever-loving piss out of North's character and make things entertaining at the same time. This character was a love project of mine, a demon dragon battle bard. After making a terrible mistake in a summoning, the demon fused with him and became a musical demon akin to tenacious D black armor lined with slow fading red to black trim just for the edgy touch and named Eusebio. He would not take part in any combat, but he'll really give North a hard time. Ground shakes and flames erupt from a few meters of where the party camped. A long guitar riff echoes and Eusebio appears out of the ashes. The party readies up for battle, but before it can get started, he starts singing. I can't remember how the song went, but it was about how he was joining the party to become known as the greatest musician. In the midpoint, he went on a chorus about how the rat that killed North was only 10 years old. Loved guitar class as an elective, so this only gave me practice. From what I remember in the lyrics, it went sort of like the rat boy was only teen. The rat boy was only teen. The rat boy was only 10. My friends were laughing their asses off. By the time the song ended, North was visibly angry, but did nothing to refute, so the campaign continued. I had an insert now to control his shenanigans in game, and a possible healer with the right songs, so things went according to plan. Battles happened, treasure was found, the new battle bard sung about how the party was doing. 
North decided he had enough of being the butt of the joke, so he had the idea of getting himself to lead the party, at least that's what his actions were hinting at. But closing time was coming to the store, so it had to be held for the Saturday session. Before the party would be split up, we usually arranged a house to meet up at so we can continue the game over the weekend. And who would be in charge of what snacks as these sessions would sometimes take from 10 in the morning to 3 in the morning. Breaks in between. So we're going over the details before long, North makes his move. So this chapter will be titled, Beast's Castle. In the beginnings of the preparation stages when I ask whose house we'll be holding the session at, Libus was saying earlier in the week on how it would be cool to have it at his place again his mom made amazing churros by the way and how a recent yard sale made a ton of room in their basement so, it would go uninterrupted. We can have it at my place said North bear in mind, I noticed last time he was going to make a move for the party leadership role, so I was kind of skeptical. Alright then, how about snacks? Just as we were about to arrange who brought chips, soda, etc, and host was in charge of meals. Oh yeah, I'll cover everything now we love it when we don't have to bring everything. Sometimes we'd have a surplus and it could carry over to the next week. But someone supplying everything is unheard of, and we were not about to refuse it. Alright, but we'll need your address. After he wrote it down in his sloppy as fuck handwriting, eyes widened to the fact this was on the well off side of town. Gated communities dot for my information. So that night I had spent in preparation fully on what will be happening next. No need to go out and get any food, so I had a good time coming up with fine tuning certain parts of the campaign. The next day arrives, and everyone is at North's Mithurficking mansion at noon. Place was huge by a small town's nature, most places being ranches and whatnot. These guys opted for the big ass house instead. Meet North's parents. Dad is a pretty chill dude, investment banker and really good at it. Mum was stay at home, pretty cool too. We asked where North was holding the session and dad told us it was in his room, and how he was happy that North even had friends needless to say. This was going to be our first and last session here, as mentioned before. North smelled like he never took a shower. The room smelled fucking awful. It was a big room, but awful. Reeked of belly seed, B.O., and nearly vomited in my mouth. Furry art on the walls. Nude furry art. What looked like a body pillow in the corner of the room. My friends and I cringed at it all, but we took a deep gagging breath, opened a window despite being cold outside, and got to work. Libus hey, uh, where'd you set up the snack table? What snack table? Maxon you said you'd be in charge of snacks, dude. Oh, I forgot. Libus and Maxin were pretty much shaken at this, but Spike pulled them aside and told them how they might be better off since it was the smell in the room. They both agreed to that sentiment as I was told after the early ended session. I still wasn't too happy about any of this. We tried to play through the awful smell for about two and a half hours before I called the session to an end. Making up an excuse is for all of us to leave. We usually stayed the night during these sessions, but this was our exception. As we left. Dad gave us a knowing nod and a sigh before he did whatever he was doing. Really good guy. I kept in touch with him and he gave me a great letter of recommendation. As we were leaving, still some daylight out, we all made an agreement that next week, we'd start holding early votes on who hosted and who brought what. Fast forwarding a few weeks in time, North managed to get himself killed again, and near death the second time. He tries wooing anyone he meets now, but thanks to abysmal charisma, and no opportunities to ever level because he is so unbalanced in a bad way, he gets chased out of towns by lynch mobs or beaten up in worse cases. This also marks the time of Kel entering into the fray. Kel was curious what we were doing for some time, but he never bothered joining in until I invited him. It was a bit harder since he could not join in on the study hall sessions. It was a problem soon solved after I handed him the law book and he dove right into it. He rolled up a bull paladin to the god of warriors justice who would go off for several hours of day in meditation and prayer to his god. He was also nudged into the party on recognition of Pandaman as being an old partner when they were mercenaries. This also meant the party had someone who could res, allowing North to get more careless in his actions and end up in more hilarious deaths. On to Kel the Conqueror. Kel's first session, and since he did his homework, he had my approval for his character as well as a bonus bag of silver for his good work and starting equipment. He soon had a set of bright shining plate mail as a big gas cow should, but one thing that caught my eye on his weapons of choice. No sword or shield, no mace, no hammer, he chose steel cestuses. When I asked him about it, he just told me so everyone could feel the fist of justice. 
Libus and Kel's characters got off a lot more chummy than Pandemon surprisingly, but more off, Kel really hated North's character. Kel being a surprisingly amazing role player, he explained that his character sensed a great evil in North, only constantly reminded of it by Eusebio's verses about North's current deeds. Kel saw the selfishness and especially the vanity that his god hated so much. So working with Spike behind the scenes as well as Libus, they worked a plan together on how to make North the punching bag of the party. North doing his lone wolf shit in town was not aware of this I keep players separate and speaking in lower voices if they are apart. Helps with metagaming and had been swindled a good share of his cash by a merchant I frequently had meet up with the party in the wilds. He wasted all his cash on a ancient sword that not only could he not properly wield like all weapons but broke as he sheathed it. So the party heads into the town before the first real dungeon. Selling his starter weapons for coin he was swindled out of north went to a weapon shop that I had intentionally stocked for high ranked stuff like what they were about to face. North however, was not intending on paying for anything. Soon, his lone wolfiness caught up to him, and he had a mob of mercenaries hired by the shop owner on him due to a terrible stealth roll. Rolling a 1, he also had a minus 10 stealth modifier on him. Not only did the shopkeeper see him take a sword and shove it in his pants. The pants were cut in half and he had tripped knocked over half the stock and damaged almost all the weapons in the process. Running towards the party with a mob behind him, he started shouting for help. Kel took this as X for warrior justice and did a straight uppercut on the fucking blue furred wolf and sent him high into the air. Kel then grabbed Libus by the forearm and launched the Luchador into the air for a flying El Chupacabra signature kick with such power, Libus's legs were almost broken. North, however, was sent far over the crowd and over the makeshift wall of the village, already dead. This, however, showed what Spike and Kel's plan was, and North was pissed. They unceremoniously dragged North's body far from the town after getting their needed supplies. Spike then placed a stone on North's body and he was revived. Kel had explained to me that through his pleading with the god of warrior justice, he argued that being able to imbue his magic into stone would not only be useful for him, but it would also aid him should he fall before his justice was done. It also served as a way he could revive someone clearly not in his god's favor and not fall out of his god's favor. I commended him for that. After hearing the news of the ability to revive by proxy, Spike made a series of intricate stones that could be easily enchanted thanks to being an artificer. But the tag team attack by Kel and Libus was the real gem of the situation. They managed to tell the town that they had been hunting down the evil blue wolf. Libus piped in a Mexican soap opera-esque story on how North had killed his mother and raped his father, so he took up the mask to seek justice in the name of Lutcher. I loved it all, and called the session there for that day, but North was really fuming at this point. Now at the end of the month, we like to take breaks to keep things fresh, so the last week of the month is always our bro down day. The subject came up on how we could take our group to a better environment. Sure, notebooks and miniatures were fun, but how awesome would it be to have more of an interaction through a virtual environment? That's when North had an idea in this chapter screw clever titles. How we griefed a star fox sim. Spike had just got done explaining how awesome it would be if there was a DD like MMO that would match people up for custom built campaigns before North cut in. Second life. Nigga what? We could use second life. I'm pretty pot fur on that truth be told, I did consider using second life in the past to hold proxy games, but to buy, let alone, rent a sim? No friction way that'd work on a high school budget. After everyone looked at me while North began digging through his bag for god knows what, I shook my head slowly and they gave that I get it look. Soon, North had his handy dandy shitty drawing book out and thumbed to an obviously traced Fox McCloud picture, telling us that's what he looked like and we should join him where he plays Star Fox. I agreed on everyone's behalf to their shock. After study hall was over, we made sure we'd tell Kel about what happened, and I told them we'd be taking all the piss out of North in this. After class and back home, I did my homework on Second Life and how easy it would be to grief now this was a time before SL had its fancy no push function, or even the force time option. We all download SL and message each other our usernames, then search up North's name and add him. He soon teleports us and good god was this a cringy sight. Again, this was a time before the great looking apps, and everything was a jumble of prims, no sculpts or meshes. North, in an early blue fox luskwood avatar proceeded to flaunt his superiority over us noobs. But he did not know I had formed a group with my starting L250 and we were plotting on how to ruin everything for North. We did get a proper welcome by some furries in the sim, and even starter avatars kits. 
we told them how we're just placating North for now, and that we were planning on raining on his parade. An IM from one of them saying he was in, and the other two joined in. Turns out, North was a real douche to everyone there, and he was not banned because he was not technically breaking any rules. It also helped that North had a pocket mod he was using as a fuck toy, not interested in type fucking or anything, and my friends were already groaning at the sexual antics that seemed to be happening with North a few paces away. Our plan began. We were going to lag bomb the sim. Now back in those days, SL was super easy to grief. Hell. Most of the freebie places had the perfect stuff from cages to orbiters, anything you may need. The prize we were after was a script that would drive up the sims lag to ridiculous levels. And one of our conspirators had the script we needed. Now how this had to be done was the guy had to go to a sandbox and add the item to a box without notice, because the script was meant to detonate on drop. One guy using the script would only make super uncomfortable lag. Maxin had surprisingly came up with a plan. Using her charms, Maxin had procured a sum of L to get a better looking avenue. Horny furries are easily manipulated. Soon she had office a status in the group for the sim and had invited us in as members with build rights. We soon got into position. One in the center in the sim, and everyone else in the corner. And at noon, things were about to get crunchy. We had arranged it so that North would be right next to Maxin in the center of the sim, in plain sight of everyone. North was doing his usual and keeping uncomfortably close to Maxin. At the time, and all the stars aligned, Maxin dropped the wooden block containing the script, and made it look like the res line came from North's hand. It's after this entire event, that Spike linked this song. Actually know what this song is because the video is unavailable as he saw it perfectly fitting. Everything slowed to a crawl, avatars being pushed back to a nuke level, only to be knocked back in all directions, then soon upwards in a singularity. We had no idea this would happen, and remembering with that music only made it more fitting. The sim crashed and hard. We had to restart our clients and we were on Welcome Island, a success. The group exploded with chat about who griefed, and if anyone had any information to come forward. Maxon took advantage of this chaos and her influence by messaging the admin, saying she saw North do it. North was soon banned without reason. Immediately he messages me saying he was banned. I, like everyone else, including our co-conspirators tell him the group had been taken over and was banning everyone. All bases were covered, and we laughed so much about it. We all left SL. I eventually came back, bit on a new account, and Maxin is still out there to this day, though don't remember her username. The campaign continues in the next chapter. Now some of you guys may remember a guy named Munin. He played a wizardy owl. He did not have much of an opportunity to do anything aside from participating in a fight because North's antics usually forced a party to leave town too early. Munin's family was also getting ready to move across the country. His dad got a better job. So, a tearful goodbye to a good friend of mine. Munin's last stand. It was the final week before Munin had to go, about a week after the lag bomb. Munin had prepared his character so that the owl would be residing in the city of knowledge after the dungeon the party had prepared for while North got his ass handed to him by Paladin Luchaluba. Tag team action. Munin's bones were just getting too old, and his adventuring days were coming to an end. He would retire and spend the rest of his years learning the ancient history and their meaning for existence. North however, was not happy that someone was the center of attention and not him. As they were going through the cave entrance to the underground ruins of a city, North was a bit further behind than usual. I mentioned that the ruins had a disturbing sense of order with tall squarish buildings, grid work of roadways, and odd signs hanging over them. Flickering snowy noise boxes occasionally tooming on as they passed by them. Before they knew what was going on, the party was surrounded by Metal Guardian's Roberts. Spike, being a cobbled artificer, had a knack for mechanics and ingenuity, he had already devised a plan that would get them through the situation safely. The guardians would halt aggression if they saw a strange thin tablet that almost every artificer bought from excavators for this reason. North, who had not read a single word of the law decided he'd charge in and attack and in his words save everyone. By saving everyone North threw a borrowed sword at one of the machines and actually destroyed it. Who knew by hitting a natural 20? Hagrid should not have done that. Avi. Their guardians erupted into action, charging their sentinel lights and their punishing rays laser guns. Kel picked up and threw north over the heads of the monsters, while Libus leaped and body surfed the goddamn blue furred wolf along the side of a building. Yet another death for north. Maxon had just simply leaped and planted a glow bomb on one of the robots as she passed over heads of the guardians, clearing an explosive path for Eusebio, Panda Man and Munin. 
I had Eusebio play a quick haste song, which I sang to the tune of the Pac-Man. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Run, run, run as fast as you can away from the big metal man. Soon the party had reached the end of the dungeon, running past the boss and into the treasure room full of artifacts which were hastily collected. The only way out was a hole in the ceiling to a cave network above which led to one of the mines used by the city of knowledge for their excavation. Getting North's corpse up the hole wasn't so hard, but Kel was failing his climb rolls. It was then did Munin stop his plans for retirement altogether and move to the entrance of the room. He erected a magical barrier that drew on his life force. He told all the party to leave without him, to be safe on their journey, and to not forget their goal. Pandaman took one last look at Munin, and Munin back with a tear in his big owl eyes before being vaporized as I mentioned. I keep my party members separated if they are apart. Death being part of separation. I did just that with North. While I had Eusebio writing a power ballad on the sacrifice of Munin, Spike had dropped a particularly heavy res stone on top of North's corpse. North back in the game. He did his usual edgy lone wolf shtick and said ha. Huh. Guess the old geezer didn't have what it takes to survive. Says the guy who dies all the time. Wav. Because North did not hear of how Munin truly died, the party looked at him in shock and disgust. And I added a verse to Eusebio's lines that the death was blamed for a clan wolf's attacks flew right over his head. Oh well. After the game, we all said our final goodbyes to Munin. Though we made sure not to tell North was not joining us I gave him my lucky dice and bag. And a painstakingly rewritten copy of all his character's journeys. And that was the last of Munin. Brandon, you were the best player a DM could ask for. This marked the final part of North's involvement with that campaign. And after this. The follow up of what happened to him afterwards and why I am not all too willing to give out too much of his personal info. Until then, the fall of the clown. It was Friday, and we had planned to meet up in Liver's basements for the continuation of our lunch session. However, we took note that North had not arrived at the time he usually does, a half hour late actually. We had to wait on him since he was in the party, and he was in school today, but we were about to start when. North hey guys, sorry I took so long. Kel dude, we've been waiting forever, what took you? North has a smug look on his face oh, I was in the office, I'm dropping out first nail in the coffin, you what? North yeah, I decided I want to focus more on being a furry. We were all shell shocked at this point. Panda man was pretty much a furry now, but this was something that would make him question it entirely. Kel broke the silence by laughing good one. Dude, seriously, what took you? North looked angry, and then it all sank in. And soon we would realize North had more on the ball for us than telling us he was going to drop out. At this point, we were pretty much at a major dungeon. I paced it sort of like a movie. After the funeral ceremony and the commissioning for a statue to be added to the Hall of Legends of Munin something all the party members threw all their coin in for as well as exchanged what artifacts they found, except for one. The game picked back up at the card shop. Everyone was about 4 levels higher than when they started I'm a benevolent god. Except North. He had died in every fight, every scenario. He took XP penalties for acting out of his alignment neutral good and more. His body was not ready. He was hiding in the back of the group the entire time, waiting, not getting into the fights. I chalked it up to the lone wolf thing again, but when he did not participate in the boss fight, I was suspicious. As the final blow was about to be struck on the boss, he made his move by jumping on its back and stabbing it. It was only a minor wound since he barely had anything spec into stealth. Kel did something akin to a falcon punch except channeling all the energy of his holy god to his fist fist of justice and obliterated the boss. North, though, thought he scored the final blow and was already taking what he wanted with the loot, which was everything. Maxin, though, playing fully into the role was already raging at this. You don't take a rogue's gold. North then began his tirade on how he was the one who struck the final hit, about how it was his kill even though he did nothing the entire delve. North then continued on how he was the party leader now Spike was additionally pissed and that they all had to do what he says, despite him never participating in the planning for the raid. It was at this point, Libus had acted very out of character. During this speech, Libus snuck up behind North and drew out a bag, only to drop it over North's head. Panda Man, picking up on what was going on, had prepared a snare spell to keep his feet stuck. Maxim struck at North's pressure points for a prolonged and painful stun. This all led to Kel going in for a gust punch that would knock North out, not kill. It was then that Spike drew out a net and finished up by tying North up. To finish it all, 
Panda Man took out a sphere of planar travel that Munin had given him just in case and opened a door to the plane of torment actually one of the human made pocket dimension experiments that caught fire believed to be full of nothing but evil and demons. Tying North to a stake and pulling the bag free, Spike took up the leader role again and said, as much as to North in character as out listen, we're tired of you. Ever since you came into our party, you've been nothing but trouble. We're leaving you where you belong, not for our sake, but for the memory of Munin. Enjoy what you earned. And soon, Panda Man closed the portal to a screaming, and soon burning alive blue furred wolf, with a rainbow tail. At this point, North snapped. North grabbed the edges of the table and flipped it over and started screaming at everyone. It was nonsense, gibberish, and everything before he burst into tears. Shop owner came over to see what was going on, and we tried explaining the situation. North, I guess to take out revenge for allowing this to happen, ran up and threw a punch. Since he was fat and telegraphing so much, took no trouble just to sidestep out of his way. He hit the store owner square in the mouth. North was soon banned from the store at that. He dropped out of school, and got banned from one of the only places to hang out in the same day, and soon after, it was all over the school. I will be covering what else happened in the epilogue. Epilogue, the news of North's dropping out shocked his parents more than us, he had apparently forged their signatures to do so, but they decided not to go against it. North's mom did have another kid sometime later, and a daughter at that. A few years later, he did show up on Steam with a friend request. His profile was decorated in that furry tripe from Unicodes, to MLP references that made me gag. As for the reason why I can't refer much to him, after the incident, he had become pretty much a stalker. He followed us home, everything. It got to the point we had to get a restraining order on him. Much to the added embarrassment to his family I apologized so much to his dad for having to do this, but he was cool about it. Even kept in contact with me and gave me a glowing letter of recommendation for college. But North shenanigans did not end there. From what I read in the newspaper about him, he had become a serial dog rapist that term will always be glued in my head. His family promptly disowned him after that event. As to how he managed to send me a steam friend invite, I'm not sure. His extended family probably took pity on him and let him stay with them. As for now, I don't know what happened to North. Munin had fallen completely off the grid with us, and I hope wherever he is, he's doing great. Maxim I know continues to play SL, but after high school, we lost touch, and hope to find her again on there sometime just to catch up. Spike and I are still great buddies, though we get our hangout time on SL since we are so far apart. We figured out how the game works now, and we share a bit of land with one of the furries we met during the lag bomb. Kel even joined up with us on SL, and he's still rocking the bull paladin look, and that's the story of North. People remember North. My god it's been so very long. I think I still have a couple stories about him and his shenanigans. I still can't believe I forgot about the stories where he tried asking me out in a very creepy way. All the time he said we should dress up as our second life avatars oh yeah. We had a lot more fun fucking around with him on SL. Please tell us more. I remember when you posted that story. I'm ready for more story time. So these events take place before the dropping out but not too far off from that time. Just a little bit of a heads up on that. Aftermath of the lag bomb. I mentioned before that we had some co-conspirators on this, but they went to some great lengths for the framing job on North to get him perma banned from the shitty Star Fox sim. Since don't remember their names, the three other conspirators they even recruited 5 more people. But all they really did was help with finger pointing so we're going to call them Lifty Shifty and Grifty. Fittingly enough they were raccoons and happy tree friends was actually good back then. One month had gone by, I was missing Munin like someone cut off my arm. Hopeful, I went on to SL, thinking he still had it. I can still remember the owl avatar he made just for that short period of time. What I was not expecting was an IM when I logged in. Shifty was detailing about how shit had hit the fan for North, how they found out he had a pocket mod that was banning anyone who pissed North off just slightly. The mod was banned as well, but North, by some deus ex machina had been let off the hook because there wasn't any solid proof of him there, but they'd be keeping an eye on him. Needless to say, Lifty and Grifty were pissed at that not to mention most of the non-autistic people in that sim who did all the building while mods and the admin just managed the place. For some reason, the super autistics were happy one of their own wasn't banned. Since Shifty was online, I grilled him on the details as to why the autistic spaces were happy he wasn't banned. Apparently North had become an amazing role player coming up with a huge storyline that they were eating up. 
Further pressing for details. I learned that this happened around the time I let him read through my notebooks on the world's law for the mod set I made. The details were sitting in my head. I knew North was stupid, but I didn't realize he could be that stupid. It made less sense for a Star Fox universe storyline as well. By this point, Lifty and Grifty had joined in on the conversation, adding their details on the matter which only confirmed things more. Not only did North plagiarize me, but he bastardized it by half-assing the writing to include Star Fox shit. North had been bragging that he could make these stories from the top of his head, how he was now the lead in world building for the shitty sim not wanting to get the rest of the gang involved. Lifty, Grifty, and Shifty agreed to help get revenge. We were going to have to coordinate things a bit better this time, and we were going to need an imposter and fall guy for this. Now back then, the SL furry community wasn't such a shamble fest of elitists and autistic spaces where the actually decent people were rare to find. You could go to Furnation Sandbox and be surrounded by people who actually had a head on their shoulders. Lucky for us, we found a full guy, someone who would be willing to get in and get out. More importantly, someone who would make himself look like North as much as possible. Disguise. The task for disguising the guy as North was surprisingly easy, it was literally just recoloring the Luskwood fox tail a bit, throwing on a shitty free uniform from the Star Fox sim and that was. Phase 2 Entrapment. This phase was much more difficult. I had to get North away from his handy dandy shitty sketchbook without him noticing me doing shit to it. The materials for the sabotage was easy, though it did take a toll on my printer ink. I had one message repeated over and over learn to write your own damn story in pencil on the first page, and then the rest of the pages in very light printer ink on notepaper. Study hall came around and I had my friends distract him, I forgot what they did, but it was good enough for him to forget his handy dandy shit binder on the table. I'm no master ninja, but I did flop the binder open and go straight past the cheeto food stained pictures while holding back laughs and disgust from the images alone. Sure enough, there were copies of my notes, storylines, side character bias, all with eraser marks and shit written in the spaces that looked Star Fox related. Sure enough, I managed to swap out the papers. Thankfully Spike had made a loud noise to cover up the binder pop noise when you open up the rings. Then a silent closing and I had the shit in my bag on a side note, I did read some of the horse shit he wrote. There is a traveling hero in the game's world that is the ideal ultimate of heroes. However, the explanation for it was that he was a demigod sent to the world on the task that he live with mortals better their lives somehow. North replaced it with his name and proceeded to destroy his entire storyline of how he'd give up godhood for a family and replace it with a knockoff of the god of war plotline. Made me sick. Phase 3 laying the trap. So with the imposter waiting for action, North not realizing he has no stolen storylines he can copy yet, we get into position. I had made an old account new to the furry world and looking for adventure or something cringy like that in the profile description. Lifty and I made our way to the crowd of autists gathered for North's next story. Grifty had been off to the side with an orbit cager aimed at North. Shifty had been off gathering the mods saying something along the lines of North is planning on crashing the sim again. Or some shit like that. Phase 4 action. We waited for the queue. When North would begin. He started off by showboating how he had something amazing in mind for today. Something that would top the last story. He went on to recap some plot point about how heroic he was. My time to step in came. Hi there. I'm new to this. Could I hear the story from a little bit earlier? He agreed and paused for quite a bit. At this point I knew he was reading the words I wrote. And I knew he was panicking. North had no story. He began stalling by saying things like I forgot and other inane shit. That's when I reveal my identity and tell him I swapped out those notes and how he stole my stories. The autists were in a riot with each other about how that didn't make sense and others pointing out the various holes in he plot. While the autists were arguing with each other, right on cue, Lifty and Grifty executed the next part. Lifty took a snapshot. Grifty launched north into orbit. Lifty teleported the imposter in who dropped the same lag bomb from before, though modified for a time delay. Lifty took another snapshot with the edit trail still on the imposter's hand. By this time, Shifty had dragged the mods in at the right possible instance, just far enough away to where they couldn't see the names yet, but close enough they could see the avatars clearly. Soon, we were in singularity once more. Soon all the world slowed to a crawl as script after script after script ran and gunked up everyone's client. Lifty had set the username boxes to be dark, so it was a quick copy paste and paint to make the imposter's username look like North's. The positioning where North was in the mods were left no room and debate about North's involvement. 
Shifty made up a sob story on the spot how he was too late and how he thought that they'd be less threatening by not teleporting an awesome shit now the question is why? What would be North's motivation for the second coming of destruction? Have you've ever seen what an autistic spaz does when you unplug their xbox? Have you've ever seen how an autistic spaz acts when you tell them my little pony is cancelled and they panic? Now imagine a group of autistic spazes forcefully taken away from their second life, and because they were distracted with each other, they were demanding how it happened and why anyone would do it. Lifty uploaded the doctored screenshot and announced that they had planned on confronting North about his plagiarism and were demanding an explanation about how we were not expecting him to go so far as to do another lag bomb out of panic. It was something. The autist latched onto the explanation like a Jew on a dollar. They pushed out any doubts in their minds about what might have occurred. They had proof now they wanted North said. After a perma ban and an apology for North's theft and how they were surprised he had done it. I left SL for a while from there after giving parting goodbyes with my conspirators I'll tell you how things go to them. North was not happy about what happened, though he couldn't say anything without being called out about it, but I saw his glares. I guess he wanted to formulate that plan to take over the group after this event. Next time we'll be going back in the time machine to an even further date. Anyways, hello everyone it's been a long time hasn't it, as Anon said. Well, anyways, I was visiting my hometown and met up with the old crew. We had a lot of catching up to do. One of the things we caught up on was North and I had shown them the screenshots you guys took a while back and they were laughing that people actually did that and wanted to add some more to it. The reason why I've been holding off on the North horses around story is due to a mental block I had on the whole thing altogether. Like for starters I didn't think it was even real. But when we chatted over it the blocks started to slip away. At first someone mentioned that around the time they had a really strange nightmare. Then Munin yes, even he came back. We sort of had a reunion not a class reunion you see. The reason why we don't hear from North anymore is that he sort of died. His parents, even though they disowned him, still held a funeral and we were the only ones who had shown up. We got word from his parents, who got their information from his aunt on his mother's side the only family member who took him in and dealt with his shit. Anyways, he had been making friends with only people who were online, furry friends, and had never voice chatted with them. A couple of us speculated that it'd ruin his fantasy if he heard their real voices. Suddenly Veronica the sexy squirrel actually being played by a dude is a bad idea, but I digress. These friends had been siphoning his welfare money from him through commissions and second life Linden for a good while so when his aunt signed onto his computer which he apparently never turned off or even put a password on they gave fake sympathy and said they'd go if they could afford it. So, we were the only ones who were there because the level of furfaggotry he was at afforded no real friends. Anyways, how did he die? Well remember how I mentioned that he was arrested for being a serial dog rapist? Well, there was a bit more to it than that. He did get out on bail but he didn't exactly give up his ways and only half assed his court ordered therapy and ended up growing worse and worse. Eventually he bit off more than he could chew. The fucker actually snuck into a vault sanctuary and tried fucking one. I'm trying to find the article on it but it's being buried by all of these articles about Wolf dog mauling a man that isn't north. Dig deep and I think you'll find it. The worst part is that they didn't find his body for about two weeks since it was pretty much torn apart and scattered all over the park. The only reason why we know he was fucking with them is because we can put two and two together. So, in the end, north became a loser early in his life had the potential to change his ways, ended up getting mauled by wolves and being completely torn apart. Needless to say he was cremated what was left of him that was found. So this is a wee bit different, isn't it? This is kind of like, you know, behind the meme. It's actually like, you know, I'm not an actual frog or a fucking Roman statue with a pair of sunglasses. Very unusual stuff, isn't it? Like, you know, but no, I really thought you guys would really enjoy this here story about North. It's dead unusual. It's very similar to that Wolfman Greg I did a while back. And you guys were really into Wolfman Greg, like seriously fucking into Wolfman Greg. I was actually quite surprised at how popular it became. But no, furries to me are somewhat of a mystery. If you're in my Discord, you would know that I'm from Northern Ireland. And in Northern Ireland, we don't have furries. The whole concept of like mascots and stuff is a very foreign thing to us. It's just not really common and it's not heard of, you know. And it's very unusual. And I actually came across, I saw a furry in real life. I'll throw up a picture for you guys. I, to, I near pulled, I near fucking crashed the car. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a chest infection. Oh, but uh, 
no, I near crashed the car. And also, I did when I saw it. I was like, fuck, no. So I had to I pulled over and got a wee picture. So I'll throw that up on screen for you guys just to check out. Um, but no, very completely foreign concept to me. It's something that I just don't understand. I just don't get. But we do have a furry in our Discord. And he's quite a nice fella. He tries to explain things whenever he can, although he does get some abuse. Like, you know, yeah, I'm talking to you, fucking you little guy. Alright, okay. But anyway, anyway. As I say, I really don't get furries one bit. Like, you know, like, is it... it does it have its own universe? Is it like My Little Pony? Or is it all about, you know, the fursona? Is that, like, an elderly ego? Or is it just some weird subgroup? Like, you know, like, I don't know. I just don't get it. So, um, what we're going to be doing is a live stream tomorrow night. Uh, Wednesday, the 8th of August. Um... 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Uh, GMT time, so UK time. I don't know what that is for you. Hopefully, you'll be able to make it. Um, please comment down below if you have any questions or make your, call, make your way across to the Discord. We've got a tab down the side. You know, just comment in whatever you see. Like, you know, I know all the comments are going to be fucking gas, 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 gas. But who knows? We might just get, like, you know, one or two decent questions. So, like, I think it'll be really interesting. If this works out well, I would love to maybe get other, like, subgroup types in, like Juggalos or Incels or anyone that's really interested in talking to me that would be willing to say what it's all about, you know, because it's a very strange concept to me. So definitely, like, you know, I, I hope you guys look forward to it. If you've enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good shit, hit the notification bell. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?